Jason Hogan, running backs coach, University of Montreal. Uh, had the privilege of working with Jason in Montreal. He will say he – All right. Hope everybody's doing all right. Um, great stuff. Great stuff by the, uh, the former two coaches, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see the rest of it. Hope everybody can see my screen right now. Paul, can you see it? Yep. Yep. You're all good. Okay, awesome. I'm going to dive right into this thing. So, uh, essentially, uh, yes, we did share an office – and almost more than an office. So I had to see Paul's butt pretty much every day because we didn't have anything to separate uh, where we would change and go out there and hit the field. Uh, but uh, all jokes aside, Paul, great guy. And, and, and when he asked me to, uh, you know, climb on board this thing and help him out, I'm all for the football community and try and give out, you know, get, give back and, and uh, help out as best I can. And so I'm, I was all for this thing. Great guy. So great that Paul, the, the guest room's ready whenever you want to, uh, to uh, make it back up to the CFL. All right, got a spot for you, buddy. Appreciate okay, so, yeah, anytime, anytime. All right, so let's dive into this thing. Uh, running back, so you're gonna see me jump around a little bit, but just to give you a, 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 an idea of what, what I wanna see tonight, what I wanna go through is, I'm gonna tell you a bit about the, the dynamics I, you know, I have with the players. Uh, so what, what I wanna see from them, what kind of attitude I want them to have, uh, you know, so all our standards per se, and then I'm gonna jump into some, uh, some ball security because I'm big on ball security. Those who know me are probably laughing at me right now, but I'm huge on ball security. Uh, you know, the ball so the, the game's so important, they named it after the ball, right? Football. So to me, it's extremely important that we take care of the football. Uh, and then we're going to dive into some uh, some drills. And, and if I have some time, I'm going to show you one uh, one of our concepts, little concept I like that I, uh, I brought over from some uh, from some uh, some film I watched uh, the Chicago Bears have been studying and, and uh, some stuff I saw uh, down at FAU while I was there. So um, for spring camp. So here we go. So right back, DNA must. All right. The first thing we talked about, you know, I, I kind of got this from uh, Coach Tressman while I was guest coaching uh, and, and uh, Tommy Condell with the Argonauts. Uh, so the AAA mentality, all right, and it, it really, it says everything. You know, you got to start with the proper alignment. If you can't start with the proper alignment, you can't cut, you, you know, can't, start the, the, the play okay uh so obviously very important we, we need to have the proper assignment and then you got to be able to adjust on the fly you know what kind of coverage are they bringing what kind of blitzers you know are they bringing any doggers um you know what kind of fronts in front of me that might change my read uh pre-snap so uh you know we we spend a lot of time talking about uh, that triple a mentality uh elite ball security so you guys heard me say once it's got to be elite okay so that means no fumbles we got to limit uh, you know, putting the ball on the ground, giving the, the other opportunity, to, uh, the other team the opportunity to take the ball and do something with it. So, so we, you know, we got to take care of the ball. Uh, you got to want to pass protect, okay? And, and I say this, you, you got to want to pass protect. CFL, man, they, you know, they pay those quarterbacks so much. And, and, and you know, you guys know it as much as I do it in the minor football and youth football and even at the CIS level, the amount of ready, you know, quarterback ready guys who show up to camp. Okay, you got to protect them because we, we only have a, you know, we don't have a handful. We don't have that many guys, so we got to take care of them. So the backs got to want to protect. Okay, obviously I'm looking for a physical back. Okay, he's got to be able, you know, he's got to be able to get big either in pass protection or, or get his pads down and get vertical when, when uh, the time comes. Uh, we don't want any, any negative plays on first down, and especially, you know, up here in Canada with three downs, uh, you know, U of M, you know, if you guys have the opportunity to follow us or not, we, we run the ball a heck of a lot. And people know it, and we still run it. And, uh, and we, we find ways to protect it, obviously. But uh, one of the best ways to be able to be successful at running the ball first down is not getting negative yards. So I'm always telling my fellas to, you know, never finish with your pads facing the sideline or your own end zone. So you're always finishing forward. And you're always, you know, striving to try to get back to that line of scrimmage, no matter what the outcome or whatever you see in front of you. Don't try and get cute. Just try and get back to the line of scrimmage so we can get another uh, another play, okay? So, you know, it starts with practice. And, and I remember way back, my father used to tell me this, you know, you, you play the way you practice. And, and I think, I think it, it, you know, if we learn anything from the, the, the previous two coaches, you know, talk about Indy and all the, you know, all the detail they put into their, their individual work and, and, and uh, how they approach it, I think practice is, is – you know, the best time for you to get better. So uh, we talk about being elite, okay? We want to have an elite practice, and our standards are, you know, ball security's got to be 100%. It's the, it's the law of the land. We can't, we cannot afford to, to drop the ball in practice. I'm talking about indie periods. I'm talking about competitive periods. And, and uh, hopefully, you know, 
by the time we're done uh, talking about this and 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 uh, and sharing with our backs and other positions, uh, hopefully we will we'll, we'll bring that to the field on game day. All right, we obviously we want to finish past the last defender always. And I tell my backs, you you do not stop your feet until you you're past that that free safety. And the reason why, number one, you can master your craft. You can work on different moves, different angles, different approaches. The other thing uh, is you're also going to help your defense because now they got to work, you know, their, their pursuit. They got to work their angle of pursuit and, and be able to, uh, you know, tag off that near hip. So I think it, it works both ways. Uh, you know, you'll hear me talk about the Steph Curry rule. I tell my guys all the time, do you guys watch basketball? And some of you might, uh, might contest me on this, but, you know, Steph Curry can throw a mean three-pointer, but he can't play defense. All right. And so what I mean by can I make a mixtape is can you pass protect? OK, can you run and catch? Can you can you be the complete back? So I call it the the uh, the Steph Curry rule. We don't want to just be able to do that one thing right because you, you guys know it. OK, as soon as we get that other back on the field because he's that scat back uh, type, you know, then that that, de that defensive coordinator now kind of has a uh, an idea of what's coming up. So we want to be able to have one guy out there who can do it all. Um, and then hats to the ball when, whenever it's thrown. So, it, you know, if you're in pass protection, you see that ball thrown, you're running down the field, you're hauling ass, all right? You're trying to get to that, uh, to that ball. One, if it's, if it's loose, you can fall in, you can pick it up, scoop it, all right? Number two, you can set up a block, all right? You can block for your fellow teammate. Uh, run back to huddle after every play. So, you know, that's a must. I need you guys to come back to the play. And then bring the juice, okay? We, you, got, you see the Kool-Aid down there. We're trying to get everybody to drink the same Kool-Aid, uh, you know, in, in the positive meaning of, of it. Uh, so, you know, and it comes with the backfield. I always tell them that you are the, the backbone of the offense. And the more, the more juice you bring, the more it's contagious, the more the defense now gets involved. And then on special teams, and it carries over. And then you bring that stuff on game day, and it makes for a pretty, uh, pretty impressive football team. Okay, so the importance of, of ball security. So, you know, I just want to put this slide up here. I always talk about it. I showed this uh, at this past clinic, the Nike Coach of the Year clinic. To me, this says it all. If you guys look at the three, uh, you know, the three pictures to the left here, you know, the more the defensive coordinators I listen in these clinics, the more they talk about what turnovers, you know, and 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 you know, the number one predictor of victory is the turnover margin. So, that being said, uh, you know, this this little study here conducted from FootballSchool.com. So, you know, it was uh, 52 out of 53 teams. That's those are huge numbers. All right, over a seven season, season sample managed to force one turnover per game uh, more than their opponent and then went on to win. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to see how important this is. And if the defensive coordinators, all right, if, if guys on defense are swarming around the ball, trying to get that ball loose, and if, if it's part of their mentality, if it's part of their mindset, then we have to kick it up a notch. And that's why I put so much importance uh, in ball security at the University of Montreal. And then, you know, that maybe wherever I end up coaching, to, to me, it'll always be something extremely important because the more you can take care of the ball, the more time you got on your side, the more stuff you can do on offense, the, you know, the less the, the uh, opponents on the field, uh, you know, scoring and driving. So very important. So I want to show you guys how, how important this is. This is actually the first clip of our, of our uh, quarantine, uh, quarantine virtual meetings with the players we had this, this past uh, month. Okay, so this is off, off the, the, we call it the slap draw. So, you know, we're slap, we're throwing the, uh, we're, we're throwing the, we're shoveling the ball up to the back here. Okay, and now I want you to pay attention to 94. Okay, pay, pay attention to 94, you know, defensive end right there, boom. So we're, we're changing the ball in traffic, all right? And then he comes, and you can't see very well. Let me slow it down for you right here. Okay, to the right of the screen. As the back now changes the, balls in, the ball into his left hand, and we don't see 94 right here, but my point is, and this was, you know, this is where we want to, to uh, emphasize on this when we showed it to the players. This was the first thing we showed them when we start, we kicked off these virtual meetings because first off, we fumbled, we fumbled the ball last year five times overall as an offense, which is way too many times, okay? Uh, two of those were, were, uh, were, were, were by a back, which is, which is unacceptable. Uh, and then the other thing is we dropped one in the Dunsmore Cup, and if you guys know a bit about CIS football and the U of M and Laval, uh, uh, you know, when we, when we go head-to-head, -head, we cannot afford to give them the ball, okay, at all. And so, um, you know, we want to make it a statement, so we want to show them. And here, you know, here's my little tip. I tell my backs all the time, anything outside the hash goes. If you're inside the hash, it's way too muddy, way too 
there's way too much traffic for you to, you know, start thinking of changing the ball. You know, he just made two guys miss with the ball in his right hand. And now why do you have to change that ball? Okay, so anything inside the hash is a no-go. Anything outside the hash, you know, if you feel comfortable and you feel like you're in open space, uh, you got to do it quickly, okay? Because I obviously I, I coach, I coach uh, using the, the offhand a lot, but it's got to be it's got to be safe and secure as well. Okay, so uh, you know, put this one up here for you guys so you can see, uh, you know, and I truly believe this fundamentals are the same at every single level, okay? And and what I tell the the the, the backs, okay, well, it's been kind of running gag and running joke, if you will, in the locker room, because now everybody's in on it because I say it every damn day. So we literally carry the hopes and teams of the dream, uh, or sorry, the, the hopes and dreams of the team. And what that means is, is, you know, every time you, you take a handoff, every time we toss you the ball, you're now carrying the, the whole team in your hands. Okay. Any, any, any type of achievements, goals, you know, the win, the, the, the go to get that, that uh, first down, wherever it may be, the goals and the dreams, those hopes and dreams, you carry them every single time. So uh, I want the guy, I want it to be a mindset where the guys get, get so dialed in that we can take care of the ball. Uh, and, you know, not, not only for ourselves, but for our football teammates as well. How do we take care of the ball? Well, it starts off with the exchange. All right. So with the exchange, uh, we do a lot of this quarterback center exchange, you know, with the quarterbacks, uh, we call them our, EDDs, okay, so I think it's a must. And, and number one, because you can, you can tell a lot by the back and how he's uh, taking the ball and, and, and uh, how the quarterback's uh, giving the ball, handing the ball off. So uh, really quickly here, the near arm. So the closest to the quarterback, the thumb's got to be down towards the sternum and you got to have a high elbow, okay? The forearm's got to have pinky to the, uh, your pinkies to the belly. And you can see the stripe of the helmet down the field, uh, you know, reading those keys. We're not looking at the ball, okay? And we don't want to roll. We want to roll over it. We don't want to grab it. So you want to roll over it and squeeze it upon the upon the handoff, okay? And and obviously, we want to tell the backs to maintain great pet. But really, what you want to look at is that stripe of the helmet. And I pause it every single time in in uh, in our meeting room. You can see the back when we're going outside zone, and I don't see that stripe going, you know, off the ghost tight end. Then you're wrong. Your eyes are wrong. Okay, so a couple of key elite. Uh, keys to elite ball security, all right, obviously the five pressure points, so the eagle claw, right, I want that ball to be palmed up, uh, you know, nicely secured, and then uh, uh, you want to lay it flat on that forearm, into the bicep, and then onto the onto the breastplate, and I call it, it's got to be a magnet to that breastplate, okay, uh, the wrist has to be above the elbow, we want to pin the ribs, okay, there has to be little or no friction, and then I want to take that thing with me, okay, so if I'm putting my foot down, I got to be able to rip across and take that ball with me because if I leave it out there, obviously somebody come out and rip it or, or club it or, or, or whatever. And then, uh, and, you know, last case scenario, double in trouble. So that ball can remain high and tight. And then I'm not exposing the ball. Okay, so my, my second hand wraps over and I'm not exposing the ball. We call it Zeke. Okay, so we, I've, I've been studying a lot of NFL tape and, you know, I've seen a lot of, of, uh, of, of uh, what Zeke does. You know, he'll either grab his, his forearm, his wrist, or he'll, he'll just wrap it up with two hands. And so I call, you know, I'll call it Zeke. So, so it's a buzzword I could use out there in the football field. Instead of start, you know, talking to him, I could just say, hey, Zeke it, Zeke it. You know, it means get two hands on it. All right, so the ball always has to be on the arm closest to the sideline. So obviously, you know, pursuit will most likely often come from the inside and uh, puts you between the ball and the defender. So, you know, you can see the picture right here where the ball right now is closest to the defender. And in this case, I think everybody's seen this clip about 100 times on TV already, right, where, where we can violently use that offhand, all right, and keep that ball between ourselves and the defender, okay? And the, obviously, last case scenario, if ever, if ever it does come loose, the, land, the, the ball will land out of bounds, all right? So obviously, we, we uh, maintain possession, all right? <clears throat> okay, now, the other thing I want you guys to take away from this is, is we got to protect the quarterback, okay, at all times. And that's obviously – in any type of blitz pickup situation where we're taking a hit off the quarterback, okay, or, or obviously we can chip our way out, depending on the level uh, of play, and, and, and uh, if you guys think you could bring it to that, uh, that level, we can help out our O-linemen by chipping our way out. And then we're going to carry out the run fake. So we essentially, I tell my guys to, to pick up trash on the way out. So we want to stay, and this is a great picture right here where we see him with bent knees. He's sinking his hips. He's got low pads. I would actually tell him to have both hands on that ball right there, on that ball fake. But he's got great low pads with, with, with uh, his, his uh, he dropped his weight, okay? And I'm going to pick up trash on the way out if I do not have any other type of, of uh, 
you know, if a coach doesn't ask you anything else to do on, on, uh, on play action pass. Okay. And then obviously we want to allow him to escape the pocket or stay, stay erect. So it comes back to what I said earlier, you know, you, you got to want to block. It's got to be part of what you do and, and play faking has to be the same. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, you know, I can't make a joke about it, but the guys kind of get the point. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck and smells like a duck, it's got to be a duck. So I call it the duck test. You know, that's a way for me to kind of tell them on the field if it, if it was, you know, if they passed the duck test or not, if it was a good fake or not a good fake, I'll say, I don't think you passed the duck test right there. So uh, what that means essentially is it's got to smell, look, and feel like a run. Okay, so, uh, you know, obviously versus any type of blitzer, we're going to fuck the fake uh, and, and meet them at the line of scrimmage, all right? Uh, so obviously in that case, you, the, the play fake no longer is, is, is a go. We're, we're trying to obviously abort and go meet that blitzer as soon as we can, and we're going to eat up grass so we can go pick them up at the line. Okay, so essentially, we don't want to pop up out of our stance. We want to stay nice, low pads. We want to sink our hips, kind of like on this previous picture I showed you. Okay, off the fake handoff, we don't want to overkill it. You know, we've all seen those kids who kind of, you know, they're trying to over-exaggerate it. It's, again, it's got to look the same way because they might not be the fastest, smartest guys on the other side, but they're not brain dead. Okay, so we don't overkill it. Just it's got to look the same way. Okay, obviously we want great low pad leverage. It's got to be the same tempo. You'll hear me talk about slow two, fast through. Okay, and I want both hands on the ball until you spill. And we're going we're gonna to ask him to stay front side, so front side of the run. Okay, so if the run's going or the, the play action is going to the left, I'm going to ask him to stay on the A gap, B gap, C gap, and spill it all the way out, all right, with low pads and carry that thing all the way out. And I, I got this from, uh, from Coach uh, Costello last week in the O-line click. That thought it was pretty neat, the eye violations. So that's kind of a eye violation where, you know, if you can spill it all the way out or if you can hit that thing front side and you can, you know, I tell them drive for five, pass the line of scrimmage. I want you to drive those legs for five yards before you end your fake. All right. And then once that ball's thrown, you're going to run your ass out there and go get them. Uh, but basically we're creating eye violations because now you put people in conflict, right? They got to follow you because they're not sure. Uh, so it's good, a good way to distract them. And then obviously we're going to pick up trash on the way out. Okay, so here's a couple of clips just to show you what I mean by that. We take pride in this stuff. We'll start our, 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 our not only our offensive meeting, but I'll have the head coach start the, the team meeting with this stuff, uh, you know, from time to time, just to show everybody how much pride we take in what we do. So, you know, eyes on the backfield right here, backs going outside zone, so wide zone to the left here. Okay, we got great low pads uh, with, with, uh, with both hands on the ball. You know, as we carry out this fake, we even keep our one hand on the ball as we're going all the way through this thing. And we're driving for five. And look how many defenders we're able to bring with us. Look at all the eye violation we got right here. Look at this guy right here. Okay, and the corner still, he's, the corner still trying to tag him off. Okay, meanwhile, I won't comment on the pass, but meanwhile, my quarterback's got now time to evacuate. All right, he's able to get out of the pocket because I'm, I'm bringing all these eyes to the, to the party. Okay. Here's another one here off the, uh, off the tight zone. <clears throat> okay, so we're going. Uh, we're going some type of split zone with the fullback ending up in the flats here. All right, look at the back, okay? And, and, and then pay attention to that, to that defensive end man line. Okay, look at the end man line right here. And, they, uh, you know, I don't, this is all on the, on, the, on, the, on the back. Okay, we got great fake by the quarterback. Look at the, you see that? Okay, when you can see pebbles come off the floor, when you can see pebbles come off the floor because we're making, look right there, boom, look at those pebbles. Okay, when he's dragging from behind right there, that's because the back had low pads. We got both hands on the ball right here, and we're pressing that point. We're keeping it front side until we get tackled, and we're going to drive for five. And look at all the, all the all, you know, all this, this green area, this, this green grass, this real estate quarterback has so he can throw the ball, you know, with no pressure in his face. So that's good stuff. Uh, all right, so drills. So, so I'm going to show you a couple of drills. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think I hope Paulie's going to like this one because we ran the crap out of this drill. And, and the one Stefan Logan, I know you guys know who Stefan Logan is, but he used to cuss him out. And he come up to me and, Coach Jay, why the hell are we doing a spin move right after we get the ball? Well, because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. I'll show you guys this clip in a second here. But it's it, essentially to me, all right, and this is what I've, I've understood from going to all these colleges and, 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 uh, and camps down south and these clinics, these AFCA clinics, you know, study your tape. And really, Coach Howell said it best. You know, there's a bunch of those, uh, uh, those, those YouTube, and, and I, I'm on Instagram. Heck, yeah, I'm on Instagram. But I don't take anything if I don't understand how to coach it. 
right? If I don't understand the coaching points and if it doesn't fit my system, it might look cute, but I'm not going to use it, right? So study your tape and come up with stuff that you see on tape that, you know what, we might need to practice this because it might happen in a game. It's got to be a game situation. So, you know, name your drills. Don't just call it bag drill, right? You know, take the time to name your drill. And if you make it that much more serious, the guys will, will you know, they'll appreciate it. They'll remember it. And like, like Coach uh, Buck said, you know, once you call it out on the football field, shoot, when we transition from one side to the other, or we're going from teams to Indy, and I only got a five-minute period, I can't explain it. I got the guy. I, I need the guys to, you know, you know, haul ass to that Indy uh, location, and we're we're going Zeke it. You know, we're going Zeke drill. We're going Shaka drill. Whatever it may be, and the guys know what what, what we're doing, and they already know because I've I've told them this before practice, and we've explained what we what we want from them. Okay, so obviously, you must start and a finish. It's all about finish, like Coach said, and then change it up. You know, it can't be monotonous all the time. You know, use a whistle. Sometimes I'll use a snap count. Sometimes I'll give them a command. Okay, so here's the drill here that I actually used last year. Focus on the back right there. Ball, you know, the ball's being handed off, and, and we're going gonna to spin right out of it. And, and then we're going we're gonna to limit the negative yards and get back to the line of scrimmage. So I actually ran one of these drills in practice. Okay, so here's a couple of my drills. I call this one Zeke it. Okay, we used to call this stuff double in trouble. I thought it was too much verbiage on the football field. So I call it Zeke because Zeke, you know, like I said, I studied him and I love his stuff. You know, right here, boom. Two hands on the ball as we, as we pierce through these bags. And then, you know, I'm really just, I'm looking for anything past that. It could be, we have this little apparatus I thought it was pretty cool. Went to, you know, University of Georgia. We got a football helmet on a stick right there. So we could be violent to the football helmet. Right. Once once we uh, stiff arm, once we straight arm with that offhand. OK, so and, and you know, start with a, start with a, 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 some type of footwork you'll use in a scheme. So sometimes I'll switch it up and we'll start with our inside zone footwork. Sometimes we'll start with our counter steps. But, you, you know, don't just start with them static. Backs have to have live feet. You know, they're always they're always moving. OK, and the more you rep that footwork, the more your tempo, the more uh, the, the less rather you're going to screw it up when, once you get to that mesh period with the quarterback. Okay, so and then you know I use the bags here, but sometimes we have those pop-ups. Okay, and I, and I ask him to you know hit this thing on the rise, and you should finish with your eyes almost to the sky. Okay, so you're not you're not aiming at the ground right here, and then you know change it up. Like I said, you can use the offhand. At, at, you can you could do a bunch of things after this one here. Okay, and then we have the split zone. So you know studied some tape again. Saw that we we had some issues with split zone on the previous year. So I took the you know the liberty of bringing the whole group the receivers and backs and and essentially you know all we're doing is working on split zone so i'm gonna ask the i'm gonna ask anybody so this this right would be the quarterback i'm playing the quarterback and this is the center this is my guard this is my my tackle and i'll move the tackle up okay and why is that because his the back or whoever because we use our backs and we'll, we'll you know we'll do split zone with both backs in the backfield or receivers uh but the point is is the, the you know the tackle is going to step inside on that inside zone right he's going to step inside so i want to mimic that with that with that uh, trash can and i'm going to ask him to scrape paint off the ass of this guard no different from any pull you know and any gap scheme i'm ask him to scrape paint and that can should almost move almost a little wiggle to, to let you know that you're on point and you're you're running through that aiming point that inside foot okay and right here i want to basically brace myself so i'm asking him to run at the target, right, scrape paint. We could be a little tighter here to the can, and I'm going to brace myself, and I'm going to same, same side, same shoulder hit, okay? And, and, and you should finish with your eyes downfield looking at that back. If you can't see the back once you're done, okay, you're looking the wrong way, and you hit with the wrong, you, you hit with the wrong shoulder. And that way also it, it allows me to get that hand inside. And I'll tell you what, we ran the split zone last year. We ran the crap out of it. We had some pretty good uh, – some pretty good successful plays out of it. This is a good one here by the fullback. This is in practice, mind you, but hey, we we hit in practice. Okay, so could be a little tighter tighter to that guard. But what I like is we're not running at the the uh, the, the the down lineman. We're running at the aiming point. We're on course. My hat's inside. All right, I'm bearing that 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 uh, pad in the V of his chest right there, and I got inside leverage. Right, I'm between the ball carrier and the defender. And then, you know, same thing. We, we ran the same kind of drill over here, and we had, uh, we had some crash pads, and we had those dummies so we could roll, so we can, we can chop wood, right? So, so we can cut block, obviously. And, 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 you know, we're going thigh board high right here. And then we're rolling through this sucker, okay? And 
tell you what, we saw we saw more productivity on a split zone last year than we've we've had in the past, and that's most likely because of how many times we repped in practice. Okay, this one here, I call it the shaka. Uh, you know, why do I call it the shaka? Shaka is basically a hand gesture, right? That's used uh, when greeting or parting from someone or to express approval. And what I like about this one is the backs when they run back to the huddle. You know, I'll give him a shaka if he ran it and if he read it properly. And if not, well, he knows. Okay, you know what? Maybe I need to be a little more patient. So I uh, took this one here from uh, Coach Smith, who's, who's now he was with FAU. He's actually uh, with Ole Miss right now. You know, he jumped ship and uh, he, he hopped on the lane train. So I like the shaka because essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to mimic the tempo. Okay, so again, we'll start with we'll start with our inside zone footwork. Okay, we're trying to mimic the slow two fast through. All right, as I press the heels. So this right here would be my, my backside guard, okay? And, and so my quarterback would be right about here. The, the, this is the center, okay? This is the play side guard, and this is the, the uh, play side tackle. So as I'm, as, I'm, as I'm going through this thing, one, I got to have low pads, then I'm pressing the heels, and I got to press until ma color makes me move, okay? So this is basically your one tech, all right? And then your second level defender. And I get in there, I get a little excited, Okay, what I like about this thing is you'll never get the same read, okay? And, and I, I, I'm a part of it because I want to make sure those knuckleheads aren't just giving the same read. I'm always switching up on them, okay? And, and, and notice how we got square shoulders, so that back has a three-way go. Okay, we take this thing vertical. We could hit to our left or to our right side with both hands on the ball. And then if we, th if we finish this thing right, we, you know, once we're finished on our right-hand side, ball should be in the right-hand side, okay? And if we, if we spill this thing, Front side, well, then we should, we should end up with the ball in the, in the uh, left hand. Okay, so here's, here's another clip, again, on, on the other side. And then, you know, great, great drill uh, makes me think of Le'Veon Bell, where you could, you could kind of work the patience back here as if you had that, you know, that cluttered, uh, that cluttered aiming point, that B gap we're trying to get to, and, uh, and, that, and then we're, we're hitting this thing full speed afterwards. All right, so so good little drill here to to get the bat, and you see now he's trying to correct himself. He screwed that one up. Okay, so that's the shaka drill. Uh, and then you know what? I'll leave you guys off on. Uh, I hope I got a few more minutes there, Paulie. Um, You're good to go. Keep rolling. Okay, awesome. So uh, I'll leave you guys off with this this last uh, this last little uh, two these two clips here, where uh, essentially this is something I studied from the Chicago Bears. They ran the crap out of this with. Uh, with you know Mitch Trubisky being able to move the way he does, uh, we had a we had a, a similar cat last year. Uh, you know, uh, being Fred, our, our our quarterback coming in, and and I figured you know what, let's let's utilize him the best we can, and and I like this because it's it's a it's a good RPO. Essentially, what we're doing is we're we're uh, this is a, I call it a trigger read. So we're gonna read the the uh, we're gonna read the overhang here, and what we get, okay, we're basically and you can marry this with a bunch of different schemes. It's it's fairly simple. Once you get the hang of it, you can you can marry with a bunch of different schemes. But we got split split zone coming this way. We're gonna basically release. All right, this this back here that could be a H. This is great for you guys who have those those H back type body uh, players. I'm gonna release him into the flats. He's not gonna build up. He's just going zero to four. All right, zero to four real quick. And then uh, this receiver. So in the states, the way they have it, they got the push crack. You know, because that that uh, that strong safety, that free safety. So uh, the way we, we just, I, I give him a runoff rule, right, where he can either block him up or he can run him off, or he can run him off, pardon me. And so we're going to read this defender right here. So it's RPO all the way, all right? And if, if this defender runs with them, we're just hand the ball off, okay? And what I love about this play, you know, you can see the amount of, of, of uh, eye violations and conflicting, okay? So we end up getting a, a bunch of yards here. We end up getting about – eight or, or, or seven or nine, maybe even nine yards off of this run. Obviously, we've got a talented back, but the scheme itself, you know, love the way we got guys chasing this, this um, we got guys chasing this, uh, you know, our bender, and then you got somebody chasing the arrow. So there's, there's a whole bunch of movement. Nobody's, nobody's got eyes in the backfield, right? So love the eye violation, love the way it, it kind of puts, uh, you know, it challenges, um, you know, the defensive assignments, right? So you'll get a you'll get a nice little uh, look here from the tight view, all right. So again, so we're going we're going arrow. Okay, you could do you could do this out of a nub. You can do it out of out of a, a 32 with a nub. Uh, you know we've ran a bunch of ways, um, but essentially you know great for it, for you guys with those H back 
or fullback or you know if you got that stock your receiver you want to put put them there in the nub okay so we're just, we're just gonna release them zero to four we're coming across we're gonna you know bend the crap out of that man the line all right and uh, we're going we're going split zone so again nice easy read for the quarterback you can see you know how much uh, how much movement all this creates because one guy's going out here in the flats one guy's coming across and they don't know what the heck's going on all right so love it love the conflict that gives the defense and look at the box you know <laughs> this is a pretty head run run box okay because again we love to run the ball we're still able to get vertical on them we're still able to get vertical on because there's a lot of stuff going on so this is kind of part of our our misdirection game if you will <clears throat> and here's another one and i'll tell you what we ran we we must have repped this play you know more than a handful of times in practice we probably called it about five or six times in the whole season. And this right here is probably one of the most important ones. You know, this is in the Dunsmore Cup, uh, you know, first and 10. Obviously, you, you see, you know, you can see where we are, at the, you know, on the field position uh, with Laval. It's always a field position battle. And we actually, uh, you know, we ran the crap out of it. We practiced it. We, we've, we've repped it where we're throwing. We, and we, we only got one throw, and this was a throw, okay? so. Give you give you a, a, an idea. We repped it all year long. We repped it in practice. We called it in game. We got to the you know the most important game of the year. We actually finally got out there in the flats, uh, which was pretty neat. But they got you know there's there's they're soft up here. That corner's nice and high. He's lifted. So we're gonna take advantage. We're gonna throw that thing right now. And again, you can see here we're not running this the the, the split zone. We got um, this is our power you know power RPO. So we're pulling or sorry this is our counter rather. So we're, we're pulling, uh, you know, we're pulling a big guy and we're bringing our, our receiver in for that, uh, for that lead to pull and, uh, or pull to lead rather. And, and uh, good, great little concept, you know, especially if you can, and, and, you know, from what I've seen on tape, from, from what we practiced and, uh, and seen on game, you know, the more you can bring that, you know, that releaser tighter to the box, uh, you know, it gets everybody's attention inside on the run keeps their attention in, in the in the backfield and uh, not at the receiver uh, run the route. So again, love this, love this little concept, nice and easy, you know, easy for the quarterback to, to read and uh, away we go. Here's a look from the tight. Boom, right there, balls out. And we're moving the sticks, nice and easy throw. So, uh, Fellas, that's all I got for you. I, I really appreciate, uh, Paul, I appreciate the opportunity. I, I, you know, it's, it's quite humbling to be a part of this, uh, this impressive cast. These are guys that I've, I've, you know, I didn't get a chance to coach with them, but I had a little stint in the, in the CFL for a little bit with, with, uh, with Coach Paul, and, um, you know, I was able to see them work and work their craft, and, and I see these guys working up to, you know, coordinating jobs, and, and, uh, and I no doubt some of these guys will be head coaches one day. And for me, it's an it's absolute honor. It's, it's, it's great to be a part of this. I really appreciate the opportunity, Paul. Hope every, I, hope, I hope you guys got a bit out of this. And uh, here, you know, here's my, uh, my social media, my email. You guys need anything I can help you guys out with. Please do not be shy. I'm always uh, willing to, to help out the football community. So thank you, Paul. Thanks, everybody. That was awesome. If you want to hit um, – I think everyone's got it now. Hit the unshare. There you go. And then we'll get everybody up there. Excellent. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and, uh, and unmute yourselves and, and go for it. Hey, Coach. Thank you very much. This was very informative. Um, quick question to ask you about young football players. Uh, we got some athletes that are always wanting to bounce the ball outside. Do you have any tips for keeping them going towards the end zone? I'm sorry. You, you, I, I lost you for a second there, but you mind, uh, you mind going over that one more time? Yeah, for sure, Coach. Uh, we got some young athletes that are always wanting to bounce the ball outside our running backs. How can we keep them going towards the end zone? Wow. Uh, you know what? That's a great question. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a, a long enough chance to coach at that level. I do understand the, uh, the predicament that puts you in. Um, I think the biggest thing is you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta teach his eyes. You know, you gotta teach his eyes to see it. So I don't know what the reads are. Yeah, you know, I don't know how, how uh, deeply you guys go into reading stuff uh, at that age or at that level, but um, it's, got, it's gotta be the eyes and you gotta, you gotta make him feel like, you know, or you gotta make him uh, confident about keeping that thing between the tackles. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but 
you know, to me, it's it's more about uh, repetition, 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 and, and and you know, having their eyes locate where they have to be versus you know trying to get outside because I know I can beat them outside. Perfect. Thank you, Coach. That makes sense. You bet. Yeah, it's a great point about training their eyes on it. It's asking the kid afterwards, like, what got you to bounce? You know, what, what, and what did you see? And then if they can explain what they saw, then sometimes yeah. you just got to let them roll with it because you don't want to make them think too much. But if they can't explain to it and they just say, well, I just went out there because I thought, well, you got to read the blocks because those linebackers will play over top and your old line's not going to be very happy with you either. So. Oh, heck yeah, especially at that level. You get, you'll get a lot of guys playing over the top. You'll most likely get that cutback more often than you'll get the perimeter. But def, definitely the eyes, definitely train the eyes for sure. Any other questions? Excellent. Well, hey, one thing with, uh, with Jason is uh, unbelievable, like Excel spreadsheet guy. Um, we had that thing down just mastered for scripting and everything. It was unbelievable. Uh, so if ever you guys are struggling with um, how to script and all that stuff, you want to reach out to Jason and, and ask him, you know, what are your tricks and stuff on that? Because he has an incredible knowledge of that stuff. So. Uh,